opportunity that you have given to me. It's a great <coughs> privilege to stand before God's faithful people and share His, uh, his uh, scriptures. Thank the elders and thank the power of God for this privilege. Before we go into our message today, uh, we shall humbly bow our heads and pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so delighted. What a wonderful joy it is to open your holy scriptures and read and study and understand through the divine help of thy Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you have given this privilege that we as your brethren, um, as along with our brethren, we can come and study thy word each Sabbath day. And as we are about to open the scriptures, we ask you continue to be with us, enlighten our hearts and minds, and may our hearts be receptive to what we are hearing. Because we are, as by nature, our hearts are hardened. But today, soften them through the Holy Spirit. And may we come much closer to you as we leave this place. May we tell to ourselves that we have been here and we have seen the presence of the Lord. Continue to be with us. This we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, this morning I, would, I wanted to share something that is uh, useful because every time I, uh, I come here, uh, it is a normal understanding I'm going to speak something from uh, Daniel or Revelation or something. But as I uh, look into the scripture more and more, I feel that there is more beyond uh, just Daniel and Revelation. There is something that we uh, as individuals have to personally look into our own lives. So from yesterday, today, and maybe if, uh, this opportunity this afternoon, we look at how we can um, have this practical Christian uh, building, uh, Christian living. God is really asking us to look into. So today we, uh, I'm looking uh, into, although my scripture reading is from the book of Revelation, but I'm looking into how we can character develop ourselves. Because the character is something what we are going to take to heaven. It's the only thing that we're going to take from her to heaven. So I wanted to focus uh, deeply onto the scripture reading that we had. Now, as you uh, look into Sister White's, White, uh, Sister White's writing, you will see this interesting statement. She says, those who would be saints in heaven must first be saints upon earth. For when we leave, leave this earth, we shall take our character with us. And this will be simply taking with us some of the elements of heaven imparted to us through the righteousness, righteousness of Christ. So when, what she's saying is, what God has given to us when we were on this earth is righteousness, and that is what we are going to take back to heaven. So if you want to be saint in heaven, we've really got to be saints here on earth. Okay, that's, that's the gist of the whole thing. Now, in order to be saints here on this earth, what should we be? doing. Okay, the Bible has ample uh, instructions for us. So what I've decided is to use uh, Revelation chapter 7 to do this, where you see all the tribes of Israel is mentioned in this. Now, my question was, if you think of the tribes, do you ever think they were, you know, people that are worthy of it? They murmured, they murdered, they did everything that they could do against God. How then, you know, uh, we can see that their name appears in Revelation. How did they get their names come up in the book of Revelation? 
how did God feel worthy for their names to be mentioned in the book of Revelation? How do you think? So this is a very serious question that we need to answer. Because when you read through the Bible, you don't see a good impression of these men. But then their names appear in the book of Revelation that they are worthy to be there, to, they are being found in heaven. So how is this possible? So there could have been something that could have been uh, happening within the uh, children of Israel that we are not aware of. Something that would have happened, there would have been a transition that would have taken place that they have found themselves worthy to appear in the book of Revelation. Now therefore I thought, let's go through each of their lives. Let's look at each of these individuals. Let's look at their tribes and see what we can learn from it and find out what, how they found themselves worthy. Now, this is Jacob's family. In, uh, it's a bit blurry, but this is Jacob's family. It's my slide here. So you can see uh, he had uh, two wives, two combines, uh, a servant of his wife. So in total, 12 children, one daughter. You can see the order. We're going to go through the order in which the book of Revelation puts it in. Uh, many scholars, theologians have uh, tried to analyze why John put it in a different order to their birth. But we are not going to go there. We are going to look at just simply the order in which John has put it, put it in, in his, his words. And we'll start with Reuben. Now, we, as we look into the life of Reuben, Reuben was an unstable character. Now, my source for study today is taken from Genesis 49, uh, Jacob's last dying words, okay? And also, Moses' last parting words. <laughs> Moses' last parting words, okay? When uh, Jacob was dying, he gave blessings to all his children. When Moses was departing, he gave blessing to the children of Israel. And also I'm going to take some portion of scriptures from Deborah in the time of Judges. So Jacob, Moses and in the time of Judges, after Deborah had fought the battle of Armageddon, battle with the Canaanite king Jabin, she sings this lovely song. And then she tells of all how the children of Israel have helped her during the battle against uh, uh, the king uh, of Can Canaan, uh, King Jadon. So using these three sources, we are going to identify uh, the characters of uh, the, the children of Israel or, or even from the tribes. Now the tribe reflects the character of the actual sons of Jacob anyway as we do a deeper study. Now Reuben, he was unstable as water, though thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defiled thou it. He went up to my couch. So this is a sin that Reuben had committed. This sin is a grave sin. He slept with his father's wife. And Paul, when he writes, he says, the Gentiles, even themselves, they do not commit this fornication. The Gentiles themselves, they detest this particular sin. So Reuben here committed this great sin. And Jacob did not forget this. When he was dying, as he was giving the blessing to his son, he was saying, Reuben, you know what? You are unstable as water. Think of water. How does water stable? Is water stable? No, water isn't stable. You know, you, you keep pouring it, it can blank, it can go in. How? You know, you block it, it will overflow. You do. Water is unstable. So, Jacob says, my son, you are unstable. But then, Moses comes and gives his parting blessing. He says, 
let Reuben live and not die. He was worthy of death for the sin that he has committed. But by the time uh, of Moses, the child was worthy of life. Let Reuben live and not die. Let not his men be few. Now, what could have happened? How come suddenly Reuben, who was worthy of death, now worthy of life? What could have happened? In the divisions of Reuben, there was great searching of heart. Search me, O God. So when you and I commit great mistakes against God or great sins against God, all you need to do is search your heart. What did David say? Search me, O God. Know my thoughts. So searching, Reuben vexed over his mistakes. He searched himself. And in fact, you know what Paul says? Examine yourselves. And I'm thankful for that. Because he, don't, he did not say examine others. Did he say? <coughs> he did not say examine others. The Bible is cut clear to your heart. It breaks the sender. Examine yourselves. And Reuben examined himself. And he was worthy to live. In the tribe of Reuben, there were great searching of heart. If you and I have something that is bothering us, some mistake that is keeping you and your God apart, pray to God. Search your heart. Examine yourselves. You and I will be worthy of life. Judah prevailed among his brethren and of him came the chief ruler. Now, if you look at Reuben, he was the firstborn. He was worthy of all the birthright. But because of his sin, he was not able to receive that birthright. And you know, Revelation says, hold fast to what you have, lest someone come and take it from you. This is what tragedy happened to Reuben. He couldn't hold fast to what he had. And Judah stood almost like a firstborn in the way he, he conducted himself. So when Jacob uh, looks at his son, he looks at Ru uh, Judah as a leader. And in fact, who came from the tribe of Judah? Jesus. Our Savior came from the tribe of Judah. And Jesus prevailed against everyone, isn't he? Now, when, when the Bible says Judah prevailed, against his brother. Did he go fighting arms? What did he do? How did he prevail? How can one prevail against your brother? It's not about war. It was the patient effort that he worked with his brethren over the days and months and years that he gained their confidence. He showed how strict integrity that he had within himself and he, he in, in fact, if you look at one of the examples when the, ch the brethren went to Egypt uh, to receive food, what happened was um, they asked, uh, uh, jo Joseph asked to go and bring your brother. But when they came home uh, to bring the uh, brother, uh, Reuben said, okay, I'll, 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 I'll uh, you know, make sure that Benjamin returns home. But Jacob was not confident with that. But when Judah said it, he was willing to leave Benjamin to go with the brethren to Egypt. So in, the, in, in that instance itself, you could understand that Judah had that uh, leadership and that quality within himself. Now, he had the, great con the father had great confidence with him. And as you read further uh, with Jacob, uh, he, he blesses Judah and he says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. You can see, how can, have you, when was the last time someone praised you? In a good way. Judah, whom thy brethren shall praise. 
So looked like Judah was someone who was really liked by everyone for the things that he did. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Great respect. <coughs> How about you and me, my brothers and sisters? Do you work patiently and slowly with the rest of your brethren so that they can respect you, they can give you that credibility, they can have that confidence in you that they can come to you and talk to you? Judah is a lion. It's a valve. What's a valve? What's a valve? Valve is young lion. One of the lion's color. Young, strong. Okay? Judah and Christ is called the lion from the tribe of Judah. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. And he stood down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? You know, in fact, what uh, Jacob is in his parting blessing is saying is, you know, you can go and raise up an old lion. But you cannot go and, you know, fiddle with, with the man of the character of Judah. That's a very strong statement, isn't it? You can go and disturb an old lion, you know, you, but you cannot go and you know, play with someone with the character of Judah. And Christ was such. And that's where we should be too. It's a character that we all should cover. That firmness that will not surrender apart from Christian integrity. When we know, when the Lord is with us, even if we are assailed by Satan. You know, that is what we would love to be. Joseph, the master saw the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to uh, prosper in his hand. Now, Joseph is a man, he was 17 years old, until then he, had, he lived with his family. Then what happened? He was sold into Egypt. But when he went into Egypt, the Lord was with him. The master saw the Lord was with him. And today, can someone tell, look at you and me and tell, the Lord is with us? The master saw the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph too had strict integrity. At 30 years of age, he stood before Pharaoh. And he led the entire Egyptian nation. Children, how many years did Joseph live? Anybody? Let's go home and look up. Okay? Look up all the patriarchs' ages. 110 years Joseph lived. Lived 110 years. And not once we see that he was untrue his, to his God. Not once. Who is the other person that we see was not untrue to his God? Daniel. This is what we have to aspire to be. You know, Joseph did not live with his brethren, just like how you and we are. We live with the people of same faith, isn't it? We have one another to encourage and support each other. What about Joseph? Joseph didn't have anyone. He was torn apart from his family. In the last days, that is what would happen to you and me. We will be torn apart from family. But Joseph is a great experience for us that we know that God will be with us. The Lord was with him. And you know, he did not, when the brothers came to meet him, he did not say, you know what? You guys sold me. You all sold me up. I lost all my childhood living with my parents. Let me fix this fellows. They'll come. This is my right opportunity. Is that what he said? He said, you know what? 
the Lord had sent me ahead of you to prepare for this day. Wow. That is the heart that we should have. Zebulun is the tenth son, sixth, sixth for Leah. Zebulun risked their lives unto the dead in the high places of the field. Deborah singing this. They risked their lives unto death. Why? <laughs> They risk their lives unto death for the cause of God. For the cause of God. Now, I think of this. When was the last time we risked our lives for the cause of God? <clears throat> or at least no risk, but for the cause of God. I'm not saying we didn't do, but this is a question we need to constantly ask. We need to risk our lives. And one other character of them is they took no gain of money. They were not double-hearted. Now when we do stuff for God, this is something very important that we need to look at, is that we do not do it for our own personal gain. Nothing that we do for God is for our own personal gain. Nothing that true. This is for every one of us. No personal gain. I'm doing it for God. Think of the things that Paul suffered. Do we suffer even one percent of that? No. They risked their lives. They gave their lives. They were not all double star hearted. You know, okay, I will do this. I will do that. No, these men were of strict integrity. Why not put their name in the book of Revelation? That's what God would have thought. No, John, write their books down. I know these men. They were transformed. They were not double hearted. Issachar is a strong couching down between strong as couching down between two burdens. He saw that rest was good and that the land that, that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and become a servant unto tribute. Now, Issachar is a strong ass, like how he says Judas is a lion. He says now, Issachar is a strong ass couching between two burdens. What does that mean? So, you know uh, donkeys put burdens across. You, coming from India, you will all relate this very easily. So it can be couches between two burdens. Now, Issachar was a person who, who bore the burdens of others. He bore, you know, comes to you, you have a burden. He says, you know what, I will bear your burden. He was, he was someone who was willing to sacrifice. He was someone who was willing to carry the burdens of others. He's a strong ass couching between two burdens. He bowed down his shoulder to bear and became servant unto tribute. You know what? I'm a leader. So I won't bow down. I won't bow down. But what Issachar does is, he bows down. You know what? It's not my mistake. I don't know, I don't want that, sorry. He goes down to work if so someone can be set free from their burdens. There will be 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, who will marshal into that heavenly gates with the character. These 12,000 will have the character of burden bearers. Now as we move further, 
The children of Issachar were men that had understanding of times. Okay, they could know the, the times in which we, they live. Do we know the times in which we live? How many of you believe that we are living in the last days? We all do. These were men who knew the understanding of their times. Gad. Gad. The truth shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. Seventh son, first Zilpah, the has made. Gad is a person who will be weak, but he will overcome. He shall overcome in the end. He represents people who are backsliders. He represents people who are weak and not able to uh, overcome dangers. But through the help of the Holy Spirit, through the help of the Lord Almighty, He finally overcomes. How many of you relate to that? I relate to that. We struggle and battle with the, our own personal weaknesses. And we ask God to help us and support us, but we continue to keep falling in. But finally, one day, we receive that strength. So, of the 144,000, 12,000 will be from the tribe of God, who will be overcome us. Asher, he was the eighth son of Jacob. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal, royal dainties. His bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. What does dainties mean? Fruits, delicacies, <coughs> nice food. <coughs> so he's 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 in an excellent position. You know his fullness, his fatness. He has everything he needs. But one interesting aspect of Asher is: let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. And let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. So now, what does it mean by dipping your foot in oil? Have you dipped your foot in oil? Dipped your foot in oil. How does it feel when you can you walk if your foot is in oil? With oil, can you walk? Can you walk? Slippery. Yeah? God is saying, uh, Moses is saying, let him dip his foot in oil. Now, what does oil mean? Now, when Asher dips his foot in oil, when people fall, yeah? When people fall. If you have a rough surface, what happens? Yeah? may fall, may trip over. But when there is smooth surface, yeah? when you have oil on your foot, think it this way, it's smooth. You go through difficulties, barriers smoothly when the Holy Spirit leaves in your heart. Okay, smoothly. So Moses is saying, this man, if filled with the Spirit of God, anyone of the character of Asher will go through difficulties smoothly compared to the others who trip and fall over when difficulty strikes them. The 144,000, 12,000 will be of the character of Asher who will go through difficult situations smoothly through the help of the Spirit. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Now, he says, Judah is a lion's well. 
He says his zakat is a strong ass. Now he goes on to say Nathali is a hind. What's a hind? What's a hind? Children, what's a hind? Female deer. Okay? Naphtali is a hill. Do you, do you know when you drive in the countryside and a deer runs through? Does it wait and watch her? And see her? It just, it just sees you, it just disappears. It'd be like that. It's a hint let loose. And they are frightened by a small noise. That's how it is. That's the character of those uh, animals. But he giveth what? Goodly words. Naturally giveth goodly words. You know your words can build people's lives. You don't have to throw money to them to build people's lives. Your goodly words is more than enough. So Naphtali is a hymn that is let loose, but he gives the goodly words. How many of your friends talk to each other goodly? Ah, I know about her. No, not that at all. Speak goodly words. Be friends to one another. No matter what. No matter how offensive it is, speak goodly words. Or if someone is Needing some comfort, speak goodly words. Maybe they're going through some difficulty. Let's speak goodly words. Of the 144,000, 12,000 will be of the character who would have spoken goodly words. It's amazing of how these men have transformed themselves into. Anyone who is discouraged or downcast, speak to them in goodly words. Anyone who is sorrowful, goodly words. He said, O oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of blessings of the Lord. So when you and I speak goodly words, what comes? Full of blessings from the Lord. How many of you? We all are here to receive the blessings, isn't it? So these are some of the things or promises that we can hold to to receive those blessings from the Lord. Next, Simeon. Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty. Now Jacob in his dying bed, he did not forget what his two children, Simeon and Levi did. He's saying they are instruments of cruelty. In fact, Jacob is actually prophesying his dying words. Okay, he's, he's not just saying as he's saying. He's prophesying these things. Through the Spirit of God, he's prophesying. He's prophesying these dying words. He's saying, uh, the instruments of their brethren who are instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Oh my soul, come not thou into their secrets. No, I don't want to talk about them. They are, it's so bad. For in their anger they slew a man. Cursed be their anger. For it was fierce and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. What happened to Levites? Were they not scattered? They didn't have the land of their own. They were scattered. They were assigned to go to each of the lands of these tribes. They were, they were priests. So the prophecy is fulfilled here. And Simeon, their tribe, actually dwindled away. They were no more. Now, what did they do? They deceitfully killed the Shechemites because they mistreated their sister. Demon. So what they planned, they said, okay, I want you all men, if you want to circum if you want to marry my sister, I want you all to circumcise. So when the men of Shechem, Shechem they circumcised, they were weak, 
That night, they went and slew all those men. And Jacob did not like it. And he said that how you could do this in your anger, cursed be your anger. Talk about anger. In the Bible, who else? <coughs> anger. Moses struck the rock. Talk about anger in our own personal lives. It can lead to murder. For in their anger they slew man, cursed be their anger. For it was fierce and their wrath, for it was cruel. But Simeon and Levi moved on. What did the Levites become? They became priests. They, they kept the covenant of God. They shall teach Jacob thy judgment and Israel thy law and shall put incense before thee the whole burnt sacrifice upon and whole burnt sacrifice upon thy altar. So these men served the law. These men came forward and worked and ministered for God. But these men were the ones who once murdered because of their anger. But now they are serving the Lord. The Lord can call anyone, my brothers and sisters. Benjamin. Benjamin shall raven as wolf. Now Isakar was an ass couching between two burdens. Judah was a lion's belt. Naphtali was a hen let loose. Now Benjamin shall raven as wolf. Very fierce. Have you seen a wolf? Anyone seen a wolf? Some of the people have it at their heads. Okay. Benjamin shall raven as wolf. In the morning he shall devour his food. He used his talents, his skill to, to destroy. You know the Benjamin, the Benjaminites. If you look at their uh, history, they were men who could, in their left hand, sling so accurately to a hair's breadth. That's how close they can sling with their left hand. Then during uh, the time of uh, Deborah, there were about 700 men who could sling so accurately. And these men, over time, they were proud of the skill they had and they used their skill to devour, destroy their own brother. And in fact, there came a point that the whole the tribe of Benjaminites were going to be annihilated. They were totally going to be destroyed. But by the grace of God, they survived. And the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in him in safety. That's what Moses says. And the Lord shall cover him all day long and he shall be between his shoulders. How about being between the Lord's shoulders? You see in a son sitting on a father's lap. You are all children. How, how good does the son feel? Children, you have to say. How do you feel when you sit on your father's lap? Don't say my mother's lap is better. <laughs> Okay? It's so secure. Good, isn't it? Yeah? I remember sitting, uh, Joshua sitting on my lap whilst I was working on the computer. You'd come every day and sit on my lap. That will let me alone on my desk. So, it's so, uh, this is something that we all have to cover. That it's so wonderful for us to sit on the Lord's lap. Of the 144,000, 12,000 will be of those men who were once using their talents and skills to destroy and devour, have now used their talents and skills to bring uh, uh, God's work and for, for God's cause, they use their talents now. And they get the privilege of sitting on the Lord's lap between his shoulders. Benjamin, raven as wolf, but now turned by the love of God to sit, to get the privilege to sit between his shoulders. 
Manasseh. Now, Manasseh was not, he was not the son of Jacob. Manasseh was the son of Joseph. But because Reuben did not keep his integrity, because of his sin, part of the birthright moved to Manasseh. Thy two sons, Joseph and Jacob, is saying to Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee in Egypt, are mine. So he's adopting Joseph's children as his own children. And he's saying, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. So the adoption is made. And he's saying, moreover, I will give, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren. So the birthright, double portion is going across. Now, if Reuben would have stood firm as the eldest son and done what God has asked him to do, Manasseh would not have even come into the list. And also, because of Dan. Now Dan, I've added in here, is when Sanjay read Revelation 7, did you notice him mentioning Dan? No. John deliberately left out Dan from the list. Why did John leave out Dan from the list? A great question. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan judge his people. It's a good thing. Judge by righteousness. But unfortunately, Dan did not judge by righteousness. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a servant by the way and an adder in the path that bited the horse's heel so that his rider shall fall backward. So Dan was backbiting. Dan was backbiting. Do you know how serious it is to have a backbiter in the church? He's almost rep representing Satan. Dan is not counted in the redeemed. He's not numbered among the final gathering. He causes people to fall. He criticizes people. He does not show love or mercy or nothing. He makes sure that he bites them and devours them and pushes them down. And this is one character that will not enter into heaven. This is not one character that will not be found because he judges his people. Who is our judge? God is our judge. Judge not, that he be judged. So why is Dan omitted? In the final list of the twelve tribes. He sees evil traits instead of good qualities. He becomes a cruel critic and a backbiter, causing people to stumble and fall in their Christian course. This is the work of Satan. He criticizes, criticized even the Lord himself in heaven. Didn't he do that? Satan did that. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, and an adder in the power. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Christ is coming soon. We have looked briefly, briefly, because I encourage you to go home and study at each of these tribes and how they are transformed. And one tribe sadly went missing. And Manasseh jumped in. 
So the fold of the Lord will keep on moving. But it's, it is us to know that are we moving with this movement? The seventh day movement will keep on moving. But when the shaking comes, men of a character like Dan may fall out. In, in fact, uh, there is a tradition that um, Judas belonged to the tribe of Dan. It's not the tribe. You can see the character traits as we study. And as Christ is coming, we need to be as Reuben, who will be searching our hearts. Each day, each moment, we need to be like Judah, who prevailed among his brethren as a leader. People should feel free to come to you. We need to be like Joseph, standing firm in God in the midst of most adverse circumstances. We need to be like Zebulun, their lives unto death. They gave their lives unto death. They were not double-hearted. They were not desirous of money. They worked for the Lord. Issachar bowed down his shoulders to bear the burdens of men. And he became a servant. Gad he shall overcome at last. Asim, he dipped his foot in oil and was filled with the Spirit of God. After he gave good words, Simeon, although a murderer, he became a pardoned sinner through the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Levi observed God's word. He kept his covenant and he taught others God's laws. Benjamin, the Lord shall cover him all day long. He was between the Lord's shoulders. And I say, those that by faith and trust in God step in to do the work we should have done. So, what I'm saying, I'm saying there is, if God called you and I to do it, then we don't do it. Someone else will come in and do it. <coughs> so that's how Manasseh came in, because Dan didn't do it. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Christ, as I said, is coming soon. As Seventh-day Adventist, we have the coming of Christ in our name itself, Adventist. And we seldom talk or think of his soon appearing. But today is an opportunity for us to contemplate and think of our personal lives. See if we fit into any of these character traits, which would be beautiful. And if there is anything that we need to work on, which would be even beautiful for us today, to make a stance and say, Lord, you know what? I'm going to, I'm weak in this area. Maybe I'm not giving goodly words. Maybe I should stop giving goodly words to my wife, or to my children, or to even my brethren in church. Maybe there are some of the things I, I am really good at. Maybe use me in that avenues. So these are some of the uh, thoughts that should be running into our heart. And if you feel that, raise your hands and we can all together pray to our Lord this evening. Because the Lord says, you know what? My sheep hears my voice. And if the Spirit is speaking to you, I want you to raise it with your hands. And if someone of you want to stand up and make a stance, as I, before I pray, I want you to stand up on your feet. And I will pray as I pray to the Lord. The Lord is calling you. And we come here to worship the Lord. And not only worship the Lord, it's also to transform our character. May I see you if you feel that you need to make a stance today and you raise up and I shall pray. Being very patient with us 
as we journey through each <coughs> trials. We thank you Lord for your inviting us and you have measured us and said that you are found wanting. Your scriptures are so clear to us and it is now we have all stood up for you and the Holy Spirit and your son Jesus to work in our hearts and in our minds. If there is any weakness in our hearts this day, we want you to work in us and strengthen us. Because we know through the children of Israel, we know they were wicked men. But eventually we can see great transformation in their personal lives. May we love one another just as the brethren, as we see in the Bible, the sons of Jacob love one another eventually. We will see them and their lives, their transformed lives in our own personal life only through the working of the Holy Spirit. So Lord, may thy Spirit constantly grow within our hearts to tell us the right, between the right and the wrong. We pray for this church, we pray for the leaders of this church who are leading this church wisely with great discernment. May you commit to them and may they commit to you. May you lead at the forefront, be with their plans, be with each and every member that is participating in every activity, be with their witnessing ministry. As they go out, may you be with them. May more and more souls flow into this church. As we approach the end, may we all feel desires of heavenly things. Let us be now earthly things. May you be with the children of this church, wonderful, lovely children with great multi-talents. May you multiply these talents so that they can shine bright before you and the people in the community in which they live. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done in our lives. As we depart from this place, may you be with us and bless us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.